Hey everybody, it's Teach Me To Dance again. I'm back in the piano room um, working on my technique and um, just doing whatever spontaneously happens besides practice. So um, I thought I would share it with you so that you could see the process that goes into it. Um, for anybody who doubted whether or not I actually practice, I really do practice. <laughs> um, sometimes I practice more than others. Um, sometimes I do work um, without warming up, which is probably not the best idea. But, um, you know, this is behind the scenes and you can get an insider look on what goes into a lot of um, what comes out to be an original composition. So um, I do use real instruments. Um, sometimes I, well, I'm not going to tell my secret, but um, I do use real instruments. So um, thanks for watching and um, more to come. If you haven't checked out my new music, please do so. Um, you can find me on Reverb Nation or you can follow me on the Facebook page, Teach Me To Dance Again, or you can follow me on um, my artist page, Teach Me To Dance Again, or you can just Google my name, Teach Me To Dance Again. So um, thanks again. you hear um, how I train my ear and how I practice um, warming up and various techniques and um, it's also how sometimes I generate ideas um, once I hear a note or two sometimes it kind of takes on a life of its own in my in my inner ear um, which is probably the best way I could describe um, what is happening when I'm composing a song. Sometimes I feel like I'm not really original because I'm not deliberately creating. I'm sort of mimicking what is internally happening, if that makes sense to some people. So it's almost like it's speaking to me and I'm trying to to get it out and communicate what it's saying to me. So um, this is how I start off. You know, I just um, allow myself to explore during my practice. So some of it starts evolving into parts of um, parts of tunes I might use in a composition. I, I generally remember. Um, if I get an idea during my practice or if I have an idea coming in that I want to try out because I heard something before in my internal ear and I want to see if I can find it so that some of what you'll see me doing is almost like I'm looking for something um, on the keys and that's exactly what's happening. I'm looking for where what I'm hearing in my inner ear, where is it? And that's some of the reason that I also practice is so that um, I can find it easier because I remember where different sounds are or which things make certain sounds. So I just kind of refresh my memory on that. Um, I'm also gonna share um, some new work that um, I plan to have finished by March. All of my work always starts out from improv, so I'm not someone who sits down with a pencil and paper and, you know, decide what key and um, decide whatever mechanics go into um, what I find to be generic patterns and music. So I think to create original music, we have to be open to listening to our inner ear and um, also maybe doing some things that are not traditional 
because we are not staying within rigid confines for creating music. So that's pretty much the philosophy I bring and that's why people a lot of times are surprised and have respect for what I'm doing because it truly is original because it comes from an original place. You can't get something original if you're just copying um, what you've heard before or what someone told you to do before and you know you just keep you're not going to create something new by doing something again and again. What happens is you create something new by doing something different. So um, I think technique in terms of um, people who might want to know if I think learning how to play the piano requires you to practice established methods. I think those methods are helpful um, in terms of what I'm capable of doing. I have grown um, as an instrumentalist because I practice and I practice the techniques that are established to develop those skills. So if you need a certain strength, people don't realize how physical playing an instrument is and I, I remember early on feeling fatigue and you know there's exercises you can do to prevent yourself from being injured from repetitive movement or just in general movements that can cause a strain or other types of injuries so those are like sort of like hidden things people don't really think about or anticipate when they start pursuing music or when they even observe music you know as a fan a lot of times they don't appreciate that part I mean when you see a, a bodybuilder you're looking at him like wow look at how much weight he can lift and he's so strong but when you look at a, a musician a lot of times <clears throat> people don't realize how strong they have to be in order to maintain a certain posture while playing the instrument. There's really a lot of physical things going on and the body has muscles everywhere so whatever you're doing to make the instrument produce sound is an exercise. So exercising is definitely something you know that I think people have to develop a certain level of ability with in order to be free to do whatever that inner ear might be communicating to you so um, it's like dancing or other physical type activities whether you play a sport um, the players have to exercise so they can execute the plays it's the same thing with an instrument you need to have a level of fitness, musical fitness, ear-wise, and physically capable of making the instrument do the things that will produce the sounds that you're looking for it to do, and also preserve your body from becoming injured um, requires a level of, of instrumental fitness. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. So I'm going to stop talking now. And if you have listened up to this point, thank you very much. Keep listening. More to come.
I'm really excited about this song idea that came to me um, while I was practicing the different keys. And um, I haven't worked it all out yet, um, but I'm going to share with you the whole process of me working on it from the very beginning. So um, if you're watching this video, you're getting to really see before I release this song in a finished form, um, kind of what went into the making of the song. Um, it's very pretty. Um, I, I can hear parts of it. I haven't worked out the whole thing from, you know, the beginning, middle, and end. And sometimes um, the reviewers critique my, my work and, and some of them um, have made comments that the, the work isn't finished or that it's missing a certain component. Well, I hear it. I hear the feedback, but at the same time, um, I kind of take it in stride because I know that sometimes the entire piece and all of its elements don't come out all at once. So I consider um, the music I'm sharing with you an evolving process. And sometimes um, maybe it's the intro that develops itself first and then over time um, another component will will come out but I share it as as it evolves because I don't think that we're ever really finished we can always improve on ourselves and on anything that we do so um, I am not um, afraid to share my music as it evolves. I know some people like to put their elements all together or force the song into a certain framework, then share it. And um, I think a lot of that comes from a belief system. And I believe that it's okay to be free to share your journey as you go along so um, you don't have to wait in hiding until the magical moment when everything's perfect and you're gonna follow a particular norm and then you're ready for everybody else to to see you I think it's okay for people to see each other as they grow and I think it's okay for people to appreciate a product whether it's music or anything else, um, as it develops. I mean, how many times do we see different editions of something come out, even with food, you know? They come out with new flavors. They didn't wait until they had everything perfected and all the flavors and then release the, the uh, product. They released what they had at the time. And maybe their best cracker is... Um, the third flavor maybe that's someone's favorite flavor or maybe someone will say no it's the original cracker that's the best one I don't know why they came out with all these different flavors and um, fairly recently um, I saw some new flavors on potato chips I had never seen before and I thought well gee that's that's pretty interesting the Reuben was one of the flavors and um, um, some kind of uh, biscuit and gravy flavor. Like, I, I would never have thought of that. Like, um, biscuit and gravy flavored potato chips. But um, that's pretty much how I feel about the music. What gets released is where we are. And hopefully there isn't anyone who is going to start off in life and be in the same exact place that they started over time. So that's part of also um, showing growth and allowing people to appreciate the changes that come about just from uh, the journey of life. So um, because I don't believe that music has to follow a specific structure, um, I'm never surprised. In fact, I feel 
validated and complimented when when someone who I consider more of a a traditional minded um, music person critiques my work and says, oh, you know, the intro was too long, the intro was too short, or um, there was no, um, what's the other feedback? There, there was, there was, um, didn't, the song didn't seem to be going anywhere. Well, sometimes the song doesn't need to go anywhere. Sometimes when people spend time together, it's not with a purpose other than to exist. So sometimes it's okay for music to just be that music without an intention. Um, the intent just being that music exists in its own creative, unique form. So I think... Um, some of my best reviews or my most favorite reviews are the ones who understand that that's where I come from, that I do have a skill level vocally and I have training and, you know, I have um, other um, skills that I could apply in a more traditional format. I'm capable of that, but I, I do really appreciate the reviewers who look at my work and they understand that my work is a reflection of exactly what I'm saying and what I believe in. And I think sometimes I get negative reviews mostly because of the clash of belief systems. You know, some people are more rigid that it's not right unless it's this way or you should only have this instrument paired with that instrument. But sometimes when we hear things, um, we, we hear different sounds that were not deliberately matched together. And sometimes we can say, well, gee, I would really like, like it if I heard um, these two instruments together. Okay, well, if I inspire that in somebody, then I think it's time for them to take it and put that together so instead of artists being shaped into a mold it should be the opposite that artists are inspiring other people to grow in their ideas so if they hear something and there's some feeling they get or a need that they get a motivation that they get then I think we're doing something right so I just if if any of the um, reviewers or or other promoters are watching this uh, thank you for watching um, you've been watching for quite some time this is one of my longest videos so I appreciate you taking the time to find out a little bit more about me um, that's the reason I'm putting this together um, so I think it's with that understanding and sometimes what is popular is simply what people have been conditioned to accept. Sometimes if nothing else is available or people are just comfortable with a particular style because that's the one that they're exposed to in the media all the time, then, um... I, you know, that's that's what the media is doing. That That's a function of the media. I think when people have more choices and options, you're going to see more variety in what products, what types of music, what types of styles people are going to support. Um, but if there isn't any, any option, then I would imagine that people are just going to continue to do what they've always done and I don't know if that's better or not I, I think um, there's certain things that hold true all the time there's some absolute truth and then there's the rest of what's what needs to happen so that everybody can feel valued in the world and one way 
that we make each other feel valued in the world is to accept all the unique differences, not eliminate the differences and force into one state of being, but rather make all differences equal and valuable. Um, and certainly, you know, if there's commonalities, celebrate that. But, you know, all commonalities be equal to differences. So, um, this song, to me, is a representation of the process of evolutionary change. Um, the song itself is going to evolve as what what I discover along the way in the journey changes. I may, may hear something that I want to contribute to this song. Um, it may change in its final form, but there will be certain elements that make the song what it is and what it started off as. There's, there's a core... Um, and when I play music and when I experience music, I don't only hear one voice of instrument. I will hear, I'm hearing whatever other instruments or sounds. And sometimes I will put together various instrumentation because that is what is needed to produce the sound that I heard in my inner ear. Um, I think there's different types of artists out there. And obviously a recording artist um, is different from one who's not a recording artist because you have other technical type considerations to make and you need certain equipment that you don't need if you're just a live performer and not looking to produce recordings that are um, marketable. And sometimes people can be surprised about what is marketable. I know I am. Um, marketing and distribution is, is different. Different considerations. Um, one of the things that I hope people will come away with and when I say people I mean mostly other artists and, and people who produce artists distribute the work of artists promote artists is to remember not to limit the potential for other people to have a experience that is different from what they have ever experienced. And experiences are so exponentially possible, limitless, infinite possibilities. We hear that all the time. Um, just exponentially, those possibilities continue to be opportunities for us to connect. So, um, I hope that you're going to follow this song. I hope to have it released by March. As I mentioned before, that um, these, these pieces I hope to have done and ready to go pretty soon.
all my work is improv, so I don't know um, what else to say. This is never going to be finished, and it's always going to be evolving as new ideas develop. I'm going to hear what I previously did. Um, one of the interesting things about um, all of my art, whether it's music or other types of art, is that when I'm actually sharing it and creating it, I don't hear it the same way you hear it, because I'm coming from an internal place, so um, some of the value of me having recordings is for my own personal feedback, um, because now I'm, I'm able to activate my receptive ear, which is a different type of, uh, it's a different type of experience, so, um, for me to be on your side of the experience of the music is different than the side I'm actually on while I'm creating it, so even though it's obvious if you're watching this that I'm listening about 
Thanks.